All right, welcome back, Prospect Live viewers, to another 2020 MLB Draft Team Preview. I have Joe Doyle from the site joining me today. We're going to be breaking down the Baltimore Orioles, the new drafting and development powerhouse, question mark? Uh -huh, maybe a little early. Baltimore Orioles under Mike uh, Elias. They've drafted pretty well. Even the year before that, they've drafted well. But players inside the organization have also developed and gotten better under their tutelage. Joe, what direction do you see Baltimore going at two and 30? They have a lot of picks in this draft. They have a lot of money to play with. Mm -hmm. They're one of the big players, if not the big player in 2020. So I've heard a couple things about Baltimore, and it's not just kind of what's been thrown out, uh, out and about out there. I think there's very real credence to the – idea that they could go under slot at number two and not take Austin Martin and potentially not take Ace Lacey. Um, you could see someone like a Zach Veen. You could see someone like a Nick Gonzalez. Um, you know, I think those guys are definitely on the board. One thing that I do know Baltimore is not going to do in a five round draft in a position that they are in is they're not going to sacrifice pick 103 or 133 just so they can blow things up at pick number 30, for example. So mm -hmm. I think even though they might go under slot at number two, they're certainly not doing that to sell out at, at any of the other picks. So um, they've got a ton of money. They've got more picks than most teams and they've got three in the top 40. So I think you can expect a huge haul of a uh, very big impact players in this draft. Interesting. What direction do you think the team goes at pick 30, for example? Um, I actually think that's one of the more interesting spots in the draft because they kind of have the ability to sit back and watch some players drop and still be able to offer them more money than they might even be able to get the 15, 16, 17 picks prior to that 30 slot. Yeah, I think with the 30th pick, uh, Baltimore is going to be really in the driver's seat for whatever name falls, because we see it every year, Ralph. Someone that we don't expect to fall, falls. Um, I think... So the name that I hear thrown around a lot is Jordan Walker. Um, I Even though I think that's possible, that would be sacrificing a lot of money uh, for that 30th pick because I've heard Jordan Walker's price tag is pretty high. Um, but beyond that, there's, there's so many preps that you can go after in that 30 and 39 range. I think Carson Tucker is a really, really appealing option. They don't have a ton of depth right now at the shortstop position. They don't have a ton of depth at any position. Let's be totally honest. They're a work in progress. But I think I think Carson Tucker would be that impact middle of the field guy that you could bring in at pick 30 and really set yourself up for success after already acquiring a potential Zach Veen or a Nick Gonzalez or even an Asa Lacey. So, um, and that just takes us to pick 39. It's like the rich get richer. Uh, Ralph, is there anybody at, at 39 that you think could fall that far that is uh, is enticing for Baltimore? I have another name that I wanted to throw out there as a potential underslot guy um, that I think would be interesting at 39. Isaiah Green. There are some Ooh. teams that are really, really high on Green. Uh, behind the scenes, he's been an absolute mover uh, from every talent evaluator that I've talked with that's affiliated with a club or just in general sees these guys. And Green is a name that's been a big mover. I had somebody mention that he's a top five outfielder, prep outfielder in this draft to me the other day. I think oh, there's yeah. a chance we could go there. I think there's some other college arms potentially at play uh, as well at 30 and 39. It wouldn't shock me at all if somebody from that, you know, Schuster, um, Seymour tier ends up potentially getting going there. Um, and there's a few other guys that, you know, I could see dropping down, maybe a Chris McMahon, someone like that. Hmm. Chicone, there's a lot of arms sort of packed into that. We'll say like top six to like 15 college arm range where a lot of those guys could go in the second round, especially if somebody goes prep in the first, you may see a team go, you know, follow it up with a college pitcher. Um, they don't have any reason to try to fill up their bullpen for the playoffs. So that's certainly not an angle we have to worry about. With the <laughs> no Clayton beaters. No, absolutely not. I don't think so. I want to develop him as a starter. And that's possible too, because yeah. they are, you know, analytically savvy. They are looking at a lot of this stuff. And I'm sure there's going to be a prototype within a few years. We're going to be able to identify as an Elias guy. So I got another one for you. I was going to say, what you wanted to add. I got another one for you. So uh, on the Isaiah Green track, 
What about Chase Davis? How fun would that be? How fun would a Zach Veen, Chase Davis prep outfielder, prep outfield coming into the Baltimore organization be? Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you potentially, and I know it's cliche, but with Zach Veen, you potentially have Cody Bellinger or Christian Yelich or Sean Green is the one that I like to compare him to. So you get that player, and then you potentially have Carlos Gonzalez follow up right behind that. That's fun as hell. Um, and then at 39, you know, another guy we haven't talked about in all this is uh, is Ed Howard. Ed Howard's been falling on a lot of draft boards, and you can never go wrong, in my opinion, uh, with up the middle shortstop play, especially one with, as projectable as Ed Howard. So um, Carson Tucker, Ed Howard, Chase Davis, Isaiah Green, Zach Veen. I mean, uh, the list is endless for Baltimore. And I think uh, if you're a Baltimore fan, you're going to have a lot of fun on June 10th. And even if they went the Nick Gonzalez route at two, by the way, I think he's a perfect fit for that ballpark, the short porch and left, the way he plays to his pull side with power and every so often can push something off the plate to the opposite field. That's a ballpark with dimensions that will play up Gonzalez's uh, batting and hitting style and just batted ball profile. So I think that's one more thing to look at. Good stuff, Joe. Thanks for joining me. That was the Baltimore Orioles 2020 MLB Draft team preview don't forget to join us on draft night we're going to be doing a live draft show pick by pick for the first round and cba round a thanks for joining us we'll be back